Um, I'm back with part two of Bob Hawke, Prime Minister Bob Hawke. Look, at the end of the day, I clearly think what's happened here is um, because of my involvement with the Queensland Police, um, other states and territories, working alongside other state and territory law enforcement, and being trained, highly trained, in um, how to, to survive in this environment. Basically, I was in Canberra and I was walking down the Parliament doors and I knew where Bob Hawke's door was. This is a long time ago, so don't ask me now. But at the end of the day, what has happened is I was leaning against the door and I was listening to Bob Hawke because I knew his voice and these other two men. And the old saying goes is you shouldn't be listening into someone else's conversation and you shouldn't be listening certainly at a door. Anyway, the door swings open and says, Ha! Ah, hello Cameron, what are you listening, What? how much have you heard, and what, what's going on, what are you... He told me to come into Mr Prime Minister Bob Hawke's office, sit down and shut up and listen. I don't know, so I decided to listen. What I learnt in this events is that the Federal Government has these agents. They don't exist. They have no identity and they are there to do a job. So they're not the federal police, they're not the state police. They are higher than, and they're not SAS, they're higher than that. They are there to do their job. They're called the garbage collectors, that's what I call them, garbage collectors, because they go around cleaning up messes. Now, th th when this guy caught me at the door, um, he was a tall guy with a black suit on. The other guy in there had a grey suit. So obviously there was a structure, and there was a procedure they followed and they both had their individual jobs. Now they were talking about, I will say, John Doe, that was in Darwin at the time, um, and how this process took place. And what I couldn't understand, I was sitting there and I was listening, I was listening to John, about John Doe, and how the Prime Minister said, look, we've been investigating this guy for at least six to 12 months, we know every single movement he makes, we know exactly what he's about, and he's a risk to this country and we've got to take him out well guess what for me listening at that door and they knew I already had their training and I already knew how to operate like them anyway I went with them on their trip that was part of my punishment so we went off to Darwin and uh, we went off I'll say Darwin and we went off and when we arrived there they went to a bank teller they had a treasury code or a code that they put into a bank teller. They could get as much as money as they liked. They went to a car dealer. They used this code uh, that allowed them to buy a new vehicle um, for the job they did um, and the, the target that they were after. Um, but basically what happened is I had to go along for this ride and witness everything. And what I couldn't understand is uh, the... Uh, they gave him the option to live. We went to this warehouse or this building or whatever and they talked to him, they pleaded, uh, the guy in the grey suit was doing most of the talking, obviously the guy in the black suit was the executioner. Um, but the simple fact is they pleaded and said to him, we will give you the opportunity to live, uh, but our orders is this, but we will give you the opportunity to live, but he wouldn't listen. So anyway, I said, where are we going next? I said, what the hell are we going to a uh, meatworks for? He said, you'll see Cameron, just shut up and, you know, you'll come with us. And I went with them. And they executed this man and he disappeared. What I don't understand and I question this, the poor bastard that went to jail for his murder. I don't know who that person was, but this poor bastard went to jail for his murder. He didn't murder him. There are several people that are in jail today that have been committed for murder and they've murdered no one. Um, actually, it was the federal government that murdered them. It's just that the way it's been set up. Now, this poor John fella, he went off to the meat grinder. He got grinded up. He was turned into blood and bone, disappeared. Now, the majority of people in Australia do disappear. And there are legitimate reasons, but there's a minority of people that disappear that is risk fully responsible because of the federal government's behaviour and the activities they are involved in. Now, at the end of the day, if the federal government never ever wanted me to be involved, then why am I involved? If they want to deny what I'm saying, that's fine, deny it. But even the Prime Minister today, um, I don't care how naive the Prime Minister is, these matters do go on.
and these matters will go on without the Prime Minister or with the Prime Minister. Sometimes it's on a need to know basis and the Prime Minister does not need to know. Now after this job was done we went back to a hotel room and these agents, which, you know, the ghosts, they do not exist, they pulled off this mask and it's an expensive mask and the mask actually allowed them to look like somebody they weren't. They opened up a brief uh, special case and in that they had several other masks. And I got a bit worried. I said, what the hell are you pulling off your mask for? I said, look, Cameron, you'll, you'll see. And I realised, and I could identify the actual agent. And, in, and then when he opened up his briefcase, he had ID for police, doctors. In another case that he had, for all of his ID that he had, he had each uniform, a doctor's uniform, a police uniform, um, a government uniform. He had everything. He was quite prepared. Now basically, you were aware of um, the case of Wantanama Bay, um, Mr. Um, the guy that came back from Wantanama Bay, I can't remember his name completely, um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, he stated the people that brought him back from Wantanama Bay, they were not who they said they were. Well, these are the people that I'm talking about. They don't exist. They do the government's dirty work. And the government is involved in this. I'm going to go to part two of government corruption and I want the truth to be told for once and for all because now the government thinks they have the right to, to actually basically say, well Cameron, we're going to give you hell for the rest of your life because you know too much. Well, I think the people of Australia have the right to know what the Australian government's about and the behaviours that they are doing. I'll go to part two in a minute.